Point number one, everyone hates live coding. Can we call the example of a software engineer based in London that we're working with? And in that case, you would like you literally turn down great companies as soon as they would say, hey, it's a live coding interview, even if most of them would not be super hard. So it's just the trauma, the fear of going blank, and also the pressure of having someone looking over your shoulder. Number two, live coding is the best kind of interview. The reason why live coding is the best kind of interview you can make is because it's the interview with least investment of time. An average take-home task will take around 15 to 30 hours total if you want to deliver something that will stand out and you have no guarantee that they will invite you to the next stage. Even if they would, you might still get rejected in the last stage, which means on an average week, you can only do one interview. When it comes to live coding, you can do two a day. Right? You can do 10 interviews. You are capable to generate 10 interviews. You can do 10 interviews. You will have a lot more leverage power because you can generate more offers from the market. So I wanted to just imagine that tomorrow you wake up and you're really good at live coding interviews and go on LinkedIn and you'll see you could pretty much interview with any company. It's some sort of an interviewing superpower. On to point number three, typing speed matters. You want to type almost as a reflex. You don't want to be looking for characters on a keyboard because it will free up your brain. And so you'll really only think about the problem. Your fingers will naturally find the, the characters on the keyboard. It shows a lot of etiquette, engineering etiquette. It will free up your brain. When you're in a live coding interview, you're already kind of operating at 50% of your brain capacity. And if you need to look for characters for like the panties, on your keyboard, you're pretty much doomed. So the first thing you want to learn, and it's nothing on programming related, you want to get really good and really fast at touch typing. On to number four, you can't show what you cannot do. You'll not be able to solve in a live coding interview what you cannot solve alone by yourself. And when I say by yourself means no GPT and also no Googling. There is nothing worse than people Googling how to attach an event handler to a button. That's something you're supposed to know. A lot of people cannot build a simple form in HTML. They all work with React. They all think style components is the way you write code for the web. It's not. And so they go into this interview, they get asked a very simple question and they blank out because they've been working always in these layers of attraction. They cannot individually by themselves build a small form, solve a simple iterative problem. In the interview, you'll maybe do 60, 70% of what you normally do by yourself alone. If you are interviewing right now, or if you're looking on how can I level up towards the senior level and beyond, we put together a free technical assessment to find your technical gaps. It's going to take you around 10 minutes and you're going to get a detailed report about what are the things that you do well and what are the things you need to fix for you to get to the next level. Link is in the comments. Make sure you check it out. Point number five, iteration, it's liberation. One thing that you want to do extremely well, it's be able to write for and while loops and iterate over an array. So if I wake you up at 3 a.m. in the night, you could even write it to me on page. If there's something you take from this video, it go back and open a code editor and try to go over an array with a for loop and then go over an array with a while loop. And then you want to type those things. Going back to typing speed, you want to type those things very fast. There are websites where you can upload a code snippet. You can upload a nested for loop and try to type it every day super fast. Like 99% of the problems you will get can be solved with a for or a while loop. And if you know this, you'll never go blank again ever. You'll always be able to like, oh, there's an iteration. Maybe you don't solve the problem, but you pass the coder block because you know these things really well. As an engineering manager, I was interviewing people in live code and they couldn't iterate over an array without dot map. They just didn't know how. I asked them to write a for loop. I'm talking about people interviewing for a senior engineer and they couldn't write a for loop. On to point number six, recursion. It's easier than people make you think. So recursion itself, it's something that we as humans do every day in certain problems. If I would ask you, for example, how many descendants your grand grandfather had, you would recurse from your grandfather all the way up to you and count the members. And you can do that naturally. It's nothing to do with computers. What happens is we don't usually write recursive code in production code bases. Every time you have a for loop or a while loop, I want you to ask the question, how would I code this recursively? In most problems, the recursive solution won't make any sense. You'll be like, well, this is a lot harder and I get the same result. But it will train that much. And once you are able to translate from iteration to recursion very easily, you'd be super comfortable. The moment you see a recursive problem, you'd be like, wow, I think this can be done. On to point number seven, big O notation. It's also a lot easier. Big O was made to look like these crazy techniques from computer majors. In reality, it's mostly common sense. It's literally, okay, how many operations I need to do depending on the size of the input. Now, people go in and, and go at you things like, oh, logarithmical big O or uh, quadratic. In reality, those things are also very easy, but they use this terminology. At the end of the day, if you know high school mathematics, if you went to high school and you know logarithm and you know powers, you should be more than ready to run big O. But the problem I see people do is they're so focused on passing the interview, they prepare for everything and they forget about big O. And they go in, they get asked about, okay, can you tell me the time and space complexity? And they blank out. Whereas this is actually the easiest part. You made it to the interview. This is just the detail. It's literally going to each line of code and counting the number of operations and how your input or your algorithm will affect memory. Make sure you get good at it. And my advice 
it's always use it in your daily practice. Take a snippet of code from your React component if you're running a for loop or a map, throw it to GPT and ask it the big O and then try to reason again. On to point number eight. Live coding is the best paid skill you can learn as a software engineer. What I've seen at least in my case, when I got good at live coding, my compensation really went to the roof. I was able to work for the top tech companies. They always use live coding. And there's also this idea of invincibility in a way. You feel like you could go anywhere and you still can get a job. You can compete even for remote jobs that are highly competitive. The opposite is you're scared of live coding. You don't want to go to the market and you put up with things that you don't want to put up at your job or it takes you forever to get an offer and the offers you're getting are even under the market or under your experience level but because you're so terrified and frustrated with the whole process you just accept a very bad offer if you're interested to getting better at live coding interviews then check out the other videos Bogdan and i put together on this channel where we have different live coding challenges in react javascript etc as for us thank you Bogdan, and we will see you in the next one